Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to practice uh, analyzing BJT circuits, uh, the DC analysis portion. So this is a two-stage amplifier. Uh, the first stage is a common emitter because the input is connected to the base and the output is taken from the collector. And then the second stage is a common collector because the input is connected to the base and the output is taken from the emitter. And now we're, going, we're not going to uh, discuss small signal analysis or calculate the gain or input output resistance for the circuit and rather we're going to only focus on finding the bias point for the circuit. Now since we're doing DC analysis uh, the capacitor is considered an open circuit so this part does not need to be considered. I can actually put a line across it. So we're going to start by uh, Identifying the node, this is our ground or zero volts. Uh, this would be our VB1, the base. This is 10 volts. Down here we have the minus 10 volts. Um, this one is both VC1 and VB2. So I'm going to call it VC1. But they're the same thing. Then here we have VE1. Up here VC2 uh, is the same as 10 volts and down here V out or VE2 are the same thing. With that we move on to labeling the currents. This is I1, down here I2, then IB1. Now the current passing through this resistor uh, it, we have to be careful. The current that is going into the collector, in other words, IC1, is this current right here. And this current that passes through RC1 is actually not the same current as IC1. So I'm going to call it I3. The reason is that there's actually current IB2 also going here. And therefore, IC1 that branches off of I3 that is passing through RC1. And this would be IE1. This is IC2. And now here we have IE2. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to put IC1 right here. Which is this current. Let me try to do a better job of labeling IC1. Okay, with uh, that we can move on to writing KCL. There's KCL for VB1 and then KCL for Q1 as a node then KCL for VC1 or VB2 in other words and uh, finally there's a KCL for transistor Q2 so we're going to start writing all those KCL equations for VB1 we have I1 that is equal to IB1 plus I2 for transistor Q1 we have IB1 plus IC1 um, that's equal to IE1 and then for the node VC1 we have I3 equal to IC1 plus IB2 and finally for the transistor Q2 we have IB2 plus IC2 equal to IE2 now we move on to equations for components For the 100K resistor, we have I1 equal to 10 minus VB1 divided by 100. For the resistor 40K R2, we have I2 equal to VB1 minus 0 divided by 40K. Then uh, for the resistor RC1, we have I3 equal to 10 minus 
Vc1 divided by 3 for the resistor Re1, we have Ie1 equal to Vc, Ve1, sorry, Ve1 uh, minus 0 divided by 1. And finally, for the resistor Re2, we have I e2 equal to v out minus minus 10 which is plus 10 divided by 5. Uh, those are all the equations for the resistors there are uh, equa there are two other components the two transistors for which we haven't uh, written the equations yet um, so I want to start actually up here uh, assuming that both of the transistors are in the active region, uh, we have for Q1, IC1 equal to beta, and beta is given in the uh, question as 120 times IB1, and uh, the second equation is VBE, so VB1 minus VE1 is equal to 0.7. Then for the second transistor, the same way, IC2 is equal to 120 times IE2. And again, VB2, which is VC1, we called it VC1 minus VE2, which is V out in our case, is equal to 0.7 volts. With this, uh, equations all equations for the system is written and all we need to do is to solve this to calculate all the currents all the unknown currents and voltages in a circuit now it is kind of overwhelming to consider that we need to actually solve uh, the, this number of equations all at the same time once you start calculating these it's not as complicated as you may think well for one thing you can take all the current equations and put them in the KCL and get rid of all the currents and basically you end up uh, solving a system of four equations and four unknowns. Um, but nevertheless, it, it might be a bit overwhelming. And uh, because of that, I'm going to show you how you could do that using uh, um, calculators. So there's this a specific calculator called the Maxima that would uh, solve systems of equations for you there are obviously graphic calculators that do the same uh, i'm going to show you how to use that so this is what you get with maxima and then i'm going to go to equations up here um, this is the the uh, windows based graphic interface for maxima it's called wx maxima um, so you go solve linear systems and then you introduce the number of equations that you have so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 equations here so I'm going to put 13 and we're going to start just typing in the equations exactly the way that they look so I1 equal to I B1 uh, plus I 2 i b1 plus ic1 is equal to ie1 i3 is equal to ic1 plus ib2 ib2 plus ic2 is equal to ie2 and then I1 is equal to 10 minus VB1, the whole thing divided by 100. I2 is equal to VB1 uh, divided by 40. I3 is equal to 10 minus VC1. Uh, divided by 3 I E1 
is equal to v e1 divided by 1 by e2 is equal to v out plus 10 divided by 5 I C 1 is equal to 120 times now times you have to actually use a star I B 1 V B 1 minus V E 1 is equal to 0 0.7 I C 2 is equal to 120 again times with a star I B2 and finally V C1 minus V uh, out is equal to 0 0.7 and then uh, at the bottom you just define what values you want to see so let's say we want to see everything so I1 I2 I3 I B1, I C1, I E1, I B2, I C2, I E2, and then V B1, V C1, V E. One and uh, V out. Let's count the number of unknowns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen unknowns and thirteen equations. So that should give us all the values that we want. So we hit OK and uh, all the values are given. These basically you can just either use these values or put them in a calculator and uh, use decimals to show them, but these are the values. Okay, hopefully this has been helpful and um, thank you very much for your attention.